Today's scripture is from Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 15. Jesus told his disciples, There was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management, because you can no longer be managed. The manager said to himself, What should I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do, so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called in each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, How much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 450. Then he asked the second, And how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, take your bill and make it 800. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves, so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you've not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees, who loved money, heard all of this and were sneering at Jesus. He said to them, you are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of others, but God knows your hearts. What people value, value highly is detestable in God's sight. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Daniel. So do any of these statements sound familiar or, or resonate with you on any level? I'm always in debt and I, I don't know how to get out. I have everything I ever wanted in life and more, but I'm not really happy. I'm on a fixed income and I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough to live for the rest of my life. I can't afford to buy a house in this market. Kids cost a fortune. Life is insanely expensive and continues to climb. I feel like I'm behind everyone else. Well, if you struggle with money, you're not alone. Money is such a hard topic to talk about for anyone. And yet we struggle with financial questions every single day and we try to handle the stress that comes with money all on our own. The reason we try to handle all this on our own is because we watch what happens if we talk about it, right? We see couples fight over money. We're ashamed to admit where we really are financially. And that's true whether you have money or whether you don't have money. And most people have no idea what God says about the use of money other than we think God wants it. Well, get ready for a surprise. As we start our new series, The Wesley Way of Giving, we're gonna learn that Jesus and Wesley actually had some astonishing things to say about money. Things that actually might provide freedom and the help that we're looking for. Whether we're deeply in debt whether we're just getting by, or whether we have more money than we really know what to do with. And as I said, you may find it hard to talk about money. Most people do. But why? Why do we find it so hard? Well, maybe we're embarrassed by the financial decisions we've made up to this point in our life. Maybe we're very successful financially, and we don't want others to know that, either because it might make them feel bad about themselves, or they might want to ask us for money. Maybe we've only ever seen conversations about money lead to arguments. And there could be countless number of reasons why we find it hard to talk about money. Besides, when it comes to our personal resources and what we do with them, it's nobody's business, right? Well, society has a lot to say about how we should spend our money, right? They have a lot to say how we should use our personal resources. I mean, let's be honest, culture spins a pretty clear picture of what we should do with our money. Spend it, whether we have it or we don't. And not only does that lead to stress, debt, 
and a sense of being overwhelmed, it often leads to this idea of happiness, unhappiness, which I will get back to in a little bit. But if society is willing to say something about money, shouldn't the church be willing to say something about money and personal resources besides that God wants it? In fact, we learn from Wesley that when it comes to the proper use of money, people of the world customarily speak a great deal about money, but followers of Christ do not adequately adequately consider its use. In general, the church does not give this important matter the attention it deserves. Neither do Christians understand how to use money to its best advantage. That's exactly what that entire passage of scripture that Daniel read for us is talking about. The world talks about it all the time, and the people who follow God don't. Over the course of history, the church tends to refer to money as the corrupter of the world, the bane of human society. Now, Wesley would agree to some degree. He said money can be used wrongly, but he goes on to say, and what cannot be misused. He also says money can also be used properly and is equally suited to the best as well as the worst uses. And it can be in an indescribable benefit to all civilized nations in the common affairs of life. So in other words, money can be used for good or for bad. So what do we do with our money and personal resources? Well, we can learn a lot about what to do from what Wesley shared. We've been looking at John Wesley throughout 2023 in, in our, our theme for the year, A Method to the Madness. And we've learned that Wesley has a lot of methods about a lot of things to help us navigate life. And stewardship is one of those areas where he has a method to follow. And too often, I think churches are afraid to discuss these difficult topics like stewardship, which is really what we do with our money and personal resources, in fear of what the fallout might be. However, as I was studying Wesley on this, he really never sugarcoated anything, including his take on stewardship. Wesley lived his life with the mantra, earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can, so you can do all you can. It sounds simple, right? But what's that mantra really mean? Well, the most important thing for us to realize when it comes to our money and God's view of our money and how God wants us to use it is, God wants something for us far more than God wants something from us. Let me say that again. God wants something for us far more than God wants something from us. Now for Wesley, that idea falls under the, the first part of his mantra, earn all you can. One of his first rules was earn all you can. Listen to what he says about earning all you can. In earning all you can, use common sense. This, that is, employ all the intelligence that God has given you. It is astonishing to observe how few people use all that God has given them. It is surprising how many people continue on in the same dull track that their ancestors took. Like I said, Wesley didn't sugarcoat very much. God gave y'all intelligence, he said, and most people don't actually use it. That's pretty much what he said. It's important for us to realize that there's nothing wrong with earning all we can, as long as we do it honestly, and as, we, as long as we do it without causing harm to others. However, we don't just earn all we can for our benefit, we earn all we can for the benefit of others. Which brings us back to that idea of being unhappy that I mentioned earlier, when we spend our money on any and everything like society wants us to do. Y'all heard the statement, money can't buy happiness? I mean, right? We've all heard that statement. Research is actually proving there's an exception. Money can actually make us very happy when we give it to others. There's a study done by a Harvard, Harvard Business School a few years ago. Professor Michael Norton, they, they interviewed 600 Americans to learn about their income level, their spending habits, and how happy they were in life. And what they found was actually pretty amazing. Regardless of how much the people they interviewed made, if they chose to give away money as opposed to spend it all on themselves, they were markedly happier. Picture it this way. Somebody who made $20,000 a year and chose to give some of that away was far more happy than somebody who made five times that amount of money and didn't give any of it away. You see, being selfless is more beneficial to yourself than one may think. And that's what Wesley was getting 
at with his statement about stewardship. Wesley figured out this concept long before the Harvard business professor did. But it can be hard to think about giving when we've worked so hard to earn what we can. And Wesley would remind us that it's a good reminder that what we have isn't really ours in the first place. It's all God's, and we're just asked to manage what God has given to us. As United Methodists, we should really understand what it means to manage other people's stuff. Because as United Methodists, we don't own any of this. We don't own the building. We don't own our assets. The conference owns all of it. We're just stewards for what the conference has. We're just being stewards of the money and resources that we have here. Now, next week, we're going to get into this idea of giving all you can at an even deeper level and talk about what that allows us to do. But giving all you can reminds me of the words from Paul in Acts 20, uh, verse 35. And I want you to think about these words throughout this week. It says, in everything... I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself, which said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, what a simple thing to say. It's more of a blessing to give than it is to receive. Now, that can be hard to believe because receiving can actually be a blessing as well. And there might be times in our life, and you might be at that time in your life right now where you need to receive. However, If we're in that spot and if we are receiving, we still have to have the mindset that being able to give is what actually makes us happier. It's important for us to remember. But for Wesley and for us, we can't just jump from earn all you can to give all you can and skip over save all you can. Wesley would say, do not throw your precious gains into the sea. Leave that foolishness to heathen philosophers. Do not waste your resources on trivial expenses, which is the same as throwing your money into the ocean. Spend none of your money merely to gratify. Again, as I said, Wesley didn't sugarcoat anything. So why is saving our money and our personal resources more important than spending it on ourselves? Well, because in saving all we can, it gives us the margin and the breathing room that we need to give as God leads us to give. I truly believe, and I might be wrong, but I truly believe that deep down, everybody has a desire to give. But sometimes because of the situations that we're in, whether it's because we've made bad choices over the course of our life, or whether because something catastrophic happened that we don't have control over, We're not able to give like we want to give. And as we earn all we can, and as we save all we can, it will start to give us the margin to be able to give all we can. So as we work through the Wesley way of giving over the next couple of weeks, I want you to consider that most of us are where we are in our lives because someone was generous to us. Maybe it was because they hired you for a job. Maybe it was because they lent you money. Maybe it was because somebody offered you a place to stay or helped you out in a family situation. Maybe it was because somebody even offered free babysitting for you when you needed it the most. Or maybe it was a church like Christ Church that helped provide for and help meet your needs spiritually and or physically. And they were only able to do that as a church because of the generosity of the people inside of that church. So as we think back to the generosity that we have received from others over the course of our life, we realize that at the time, it might have not cost those folks all that much in the long run. But based on where we were in our life, when that act of generosity actually happened, it was life-changing for us. And as we follow Wesley's mantra, to earn all you can, save all you can, so you can give all you can, allowing us to do all we can, we can share that same generosity with others and they can maybe feel the same thing we felt when someone shared it with us. But it all starts with earning all you can because earning all you can allows us to save all we can, which gives us the margin to give all we can so we can make a difference in the lives of so many people. 
And we're going to talk about that difference that you all have helped make in the lives of those people here at Christ Church next week a little bit more. So thank you for your generosity and join me as we try to live into Wesley's mantra for stewardship of earning all we can, saving all we can, and giving all we can, allowing us to do all we can for the good of God. Let's pray. Lord, we're so grateful for all that you have given to us. Lord, help us to realize that it's all yours. We're just stewards of what we have been given. Help us to apply this mantra from Wesley, this Wesley way of giving to our resources, to our finances, so that we can continue to become the follower of you that you want us to be. This is in no way any kind of guilt or any kind of anything. We're only asked to give based on what we have. If we have it, may we use it the way you want us to use it. If we don't, may we take the steps that will allow us to at some point have it. In all of those things, help us to realize that you have given us really good steps to become free to do what you've called us to do. We ask all of this in your son's name. And everyone said, amen. <laughs>